Maida, the Republicans clearly are very focused on this climate in particular. What should and should not be in the Fed's dur jurisdiction? Do they have a point? Unfortunately, they don't. It's really quite unfortunate that these legislators are really showing that they're posturing for the cameras back home. The role of the Federal Reserve is the safety and soundness of the banking system. So any kind of risk, be it climate change, cybersecurity, vendor risk, anything that could impact the banks is very much under the responsibility of the Federal Reserve. Absolutely, the Fed does not tell banks to what sectors of the economy to lend. However, absolutely, it is the responsible of the Federal Reserve, as well as the FDIC and OCC, to guide the banks as to how to identify and how to measure those risks. And what yep. we really should be focusing on are Professor Raskin's credentials, as well as Doctors Cook and Jefferson. And they have incredible credentials, and they're very, very well suited to the many responsibilities of ensuring that the banking system is safe and sound for Americans. Okay, so how does Professor Raskin do that? And how does she tick both boxes, i.e. getting herself confirmed, diffusing the concerns that the Republican Party have, and make sure that the, the, the banks are lending responsibly and are characterizing climate risk properly in terms of the risks that they face? Well, that's a, that's a great question. I mean, she's not a politician. So uh, her responsibility is to demonstrate her incredible track record, her skills, her understanding of banking law, which is obviously very important. Let's remember that Professor Raskin has worked for Treasury, uh, has worked in a variety of important regulatory roles. So if the Republicans want to really analyze her skills and her track record, they're there. Uh, and anybody who's ever worked with any kind of regulatory entity, and frankly at the banks, know very, very well that the Fed does not tell banks how to lend. If you go to the compliance manuals, yes, not exactly sexy, quite geeky, but the compliance manuals of the Federal Reserve and the OCC are available publicly. And it's not the regulators that tell banks uh, to whom to lend. It's up to the risk managers and the level of tolerance that the shareholders have. And so we really need to try to find a way in this country to go back to talking about substance and content and not politicizing absolutely everything. These candidates bring mm. incredible track records, experience, and the cognizant diversity that they would bring to the entire board and the entire institution is something that's barely being talked about. And I think that's also very important. Well, and Mike, obviously one of the uh, issues on one side of the aisle with Lisa Cook in particular is the fact that she doesn't have a quote unquote strong monetary policy background specifically. You are very familiar with the Fed. You speak to these officials all the time. How many would have had that qualification going in, would you say? Well, it's an interesting question because uh, she really is qualified to be on the Federal Reserve and uh, pretty much everybody who has anything to do with monetary policy or economics would agree with that. This is sort of a Republican way of attacking her, get, getting at President Biden uh, through her. Uh, Jay Powell, uh, trained as a lawyer, worked as an investment banker, had no monetary policy experience. Lael Brainerd had no monetary policy experience before she came to the Fed. And certainly uh, almost none of the people uh, who Donald Trump wanted to nominate to the Fed had any monetary policy experience. Uh, the ones that did go through, uh, people like Rich Clarida, who had monetary policy experience. Uh, so it, it's kind of a, a false trail in Lisa Cook's case. Uh, she's probably going to be confirmed, and uh, I think Philip Jefferson has a very good chance of it. The issue is really going to come down to can the Republicans find a way to block Sarah Bloom Raskin? Mike, who who could be who would potentially be a uh, another candidate to fill that role? Let's say that she doesn't get through, and, and there are plenty of people that think that she won't. How big a hole will this leave for the Fed? How big a problem would this create? It's more of an institutional problem over the longer term. Uh, we've been without a vice chair for supervision since Randall Quarles' term as vice chair ended in October. He stayed on the Fed as a governor until the end of December. But they just divided up the supervisory rules. Where it could hurt the Fed is in the long-term planning for what kind of rules are going to be needed, and this includes climate change, but also crypto and uh, cybersecurity, those things that are yet to be worked on 
on and the coordination that has to be done with other banking regulators here in the United States would suffer from not having a point person. And it'll be interesting to see if Congress, which set up that position in the Dodd-Frank bill, would allow it to go too long without being filled. Maida, of course, what it all comes down to at the end of the day is monetary policy settings. That has been in focus with the BOE and the ECB today, the battle against inflation. Would you consider any of these three to be inflation hawks? And depending on that answer, could they shift the balance of monetary policy moving forward should they be confirmed? I mean, I think that one thing that the, the legislators right now aren't focusing on enough is that, of course, leadership matters. These three nominees are incredibly qualified and I see that they're going they're very very orientated to looking at the data and I do believe that they're likely together with analysis of the remaining board members and all the other economists and soldiers that work at all the district feds they are likely to raise rates uh, and but that's because we've been in this unprecedented two decades of very very low interest rates. And to the point about uh, them not being monetary policy specialists, we have the Federal Reserve and the other regulators have a lot of monetary policy specialists. Mm -hmm. What you actually want is you also want legal experts and you want international politics experts. You want more of that skills diversity. I worked at the Fed, believe me, there are plenty of people there who are not economists, but everybody brings in math skills or language skills or politics skills. And for this role, for Professor Raskin's role, which you really need to understand are the laws, what the regulations should be, and what the risks are that could destabilize the banking sector and imperil Americans.